Welcome to Optimal Anesthesia, where we turn complex medical science into stories that inspire better patient care. Today, we're about to embark on an epic journey, a journey that starts with a single breath of air and ends deep within the cells of our body. That's right, we're talking about the heroic path of oxygen. So buckle up, because this journey isn't just crucial for life, but also for everything we do as anesthesiologists. Picture this, a patient takes a breath. Oxygen rushes into the lungs, filling tiny air sacs called alveoli. Here, the first stage of our journey begins. These alveoli are like bustling ports where oxygen exchanges place with carbon dioxide, trading spaces with the blood. But not all exchanges are created equal, some passengers may get stuck. That's where the alveolar arterial oxygen gradient comes in, measuring the efficiency of this exchange. A wide gap. That could be a red flag, signaling conditions like ARDS or a sneaky pulmonary embolism. Once in the bloodstream, oxygen is carried to tissues in two main ways. The majority, about 98%, is bound to hemoglobin in red blood cells, while a small percentage, around 2%, is dissolved directly in the plasma. Hemoglobin is the heavy lifter here, and its efficiency depends on factors like the body's pH, carbon dioxide levels, and temperature. A shift in any of these can affect how easily oxygen is released from hemoglobin to the tissues. But oxygen doesn't just need a ride, it needs to be delivered right where it's needed. This is where the oxygen delivery equation comes into play, cardiac output times arterial oxygen content. Imagine cardiac output as the speed of delivery trucks, and CaO2 as the packages of oxygen they're carrying. If the trucks slow down or carry fewer packages, whether due to low hemoglobin, reduced oxygen saturation, or poor heart function, then the tissues might go hungry for oxygen. At last, oxygen reaches its destination, the tissues. Here, it's all about extraction. Imagine oxygen as a resource at a worksite, each cell grabs what it needs to fuel its activities. But what happens when resources are scarce? Microcirculation, or blood flow at the tiniest level, is the key here. Conditions like shock or sepsis can choke off this blood flow, limiting the oxygen available for cells to use. If tissues can't get enough, they can't produce the energy they need to keep working. Thank you for joining me on this fascinating journey with oxygen. Remember, every breath matters, and every detail of this process is a key to patient safety. You can find more insights like these on OptimalAnesthesia.com, where we break down complex topics to help you become a better clinician. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and share it with your colleagues. Until next time, keep breathing easy and stay curious.